Can you hear me, guys? Just oh, it seems not you cannot hear me. Hello. Hello. Uh, great. Mm, just a sec. Yes, I have to. Uh, Bruna, Bruna is here. Just a sec. Invite a speaker. Bruno, now you. I, I guess you have. You can connect. Connect uh, audio. Hello. Something. You hear me? Oh, very good. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. I can, can, can see you. Wagner? Yeah. You here? I, I will be just uh, on uh, on audio, not without video. It's not necessary, I guess. Uh, Is Wagner here? Do you know where uh, Wagner is? Uh, he's uh, here, I guess he's connected. We already have attendees.
Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Relief. <laughs> yeah, just in time. Yeah. I, I could have a heart attack. <laughs> Oh, okay, we are started in three minutes. Okay, I think it's it's time to start. I hope uh, everybody can hear us. You can uh, use chat window, or maybe somebody can confirm that you can hear us. Today we will hold a webinar about databases inside Red Studio and Delphi ecosystem. Hello everybody. Today we will uh, we will lead the webinar together with Bruno Ferenc and Wagner Landgraf. Yes, let's start. Uh, just for quality purposes, uh, guys, uh, everybody except of presenters will be on mute. And uh, uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them uh, inside our chat window. Also, uh, uh, you can uh, we will have a Q and A section uh, in the end of the webinar where you can uh, will have a good you will have a good position uh, 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 to ask questions from directly from Bruno and Wagner, who is uh, uh, I, I, I think very popular persons uh, in Delphi world. Also, you, of course, you will uh, be able to find a recording of the webinar uh, in the YouTube. Uh, I think you will be able to find it very fast and very quickly, just uh, pro providing a couple of keywords. 
uh, and again uh, just like uh, uh, just uh, uh, notes uh, who will be speakers it's me Serge Pilko uh, Bruno Ferenc uh, TMS Software uh, CEO and founder and Wagner Land Landgraf also who is uh, one of the most uh, in valuable persons in inside TMS Software company who is uh, responsible for databases uh, and databases development am I correct Wagner yes Great. In the beginning of the webinar, just a couple of words about uh, uh, the company where I'm working, and uh, then uh, Bruno will present uh, just a little words about TMS. Uh, at Softicon, we are uh, working on uh, migration of legacy software to up to date. Uh, of uh, up-to-date versions using up-to-date technologies and frameworks especially delphi we are i think like we are the delphi evangelist we like delphi we bid on delphi we are uh, working on enhancement uh, of delphi software uh, engineering migration for legacy delphi versions like delphi 7 to up-to-date delphi versions delphi rio and uh, uh, Delphi is one of the our one of the main uh, technologies and domains. Uh, right now, uh, right now, let's. Uh, I'll give some words to Bruno. He can introduce TMS software for you guys. But I think uh, most all of you know this company, and I very like TMS software. Bruno, you're welcome. Thank you, uh, Serge, for uh, inviting us here, for having this webinar, and uh, welcome to everyone attending this webinar. So, um, introducing TMS software, I think uh, most of us, or most of you will already know us. We have been uh, developing components for Delphi since 1995. Started, of course, with VCL, and um, over the years, we have extended this uh, offerings of components with the main goal of making your development faster and making your development easier and enable you to, to develop better software. Uh, so we're originally uh, focusing on VCL over time. Uh, Cross-platform components, UI controls were added to that. And also topic of uh, today, um, frameworks um, for accessing uh, or Mm, REST APIs, creating REST APIs, um, offering multi-tier solutions um, to um, hook up and connect to uh, databases. And Wagner will cover more of that later in this uh, webinar. Great. Thank you, Bruno. And guys, uh, I, 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 I think you already saw, we announced that we will have and we will share for you a uh, promo code for if you want to purchase uh, a TM, new TMS software products and new licenses. It will be 10% discount. And uh, in the beginning, in the end of the webinar, sorry, we will share the promo code value with you. Bruno, can you, Bruno, can you explain for what exact products it will can be applied? Well, we have uh, offered the 10% discount on, uh, let's say, our main uh, product bundles. So, uh, first of all, is TMS All Access, which, in my opinion, is the most easy and most convenient way to get access to simply everything what we have now and what we will have in the future. No questions asked, everything every product we uh, release uh, you have access to you have access to betas uh, you have of course access to our support so it's simply all access and um, one point i wanted to stress that is over often overlooked is that um, the renewal of all access is uh, very simple it's on a yearly basis and it's only 30 percent of the uh normal or the start starting product price so in a nutshell for uh 495 euros you can renew that all access license every year so it's like a subscription 
uh, once you uh, are in this subscription, you get everything um, at all the time for just 495 euros per year renewal. Um, the starting price is 1695 euros. But of course, um, you get a 10% discount when following this webinar. If all access is a little bit too much for you to grab, we have um, split this up into several uh, smaller bundles, FNC Component Studio, which is our set of components for cross-platform development and cross-framework development. That means that with these components, controls, uh, you can create VCL applications, you can create FMX cross-platform applications, you can also use these uh, controls and components from the free Lazarus IDE on Windows, Mac and Linux. And uh, introduced last year is also the possibility to use these controls in our web core framework. So you can also create web applications using these controls and components. If you uh, are only doing cross-platform development with FireMonkey framework, then we bundled everything in the FMX component studio. If uh, what is of interest to you is um, business logic and ORM, access to um, a remote database or creating your own REST API servers, then everything is bundled in the business subscription. And finally, the VCL subscription gets you completely covered for um, your VCL needs. So when you are, your main activity is still developing Windows applications with VCL components, then uh, with the VCL subscription, you have uh, complete access to all our VCL components. Thank you, Bruno. Also, guys, I have to announce, but it's not like announce you. I think you know that very soon we will have most of the uh, famous uh, Delphi-related conferences conference uh, uh, in Europe. In Dusseldorf, it will be in Germany in Dusseldorf. It will it will it will be three days. It's uh, I think it's uh, a good number for Delphi. Uh, and Delphi and Red Studio related technologies. It will be very interesting. Bruno also will be a speaker at this conference and uh, I also will participate, but, but like a speaker and we can meet uh, on this conference. And uh, uh, also we will have a promo code 15% discount for you guys. If you still did not buy the ticket, you will be able to apply our uh, coupon and uh, get the 15% discount. Also, we will share it in the end of the webinar. That's, uh, we are down on, on this, and it was just like introduction. Right now, we are starting. And let's uh, start from a couple of words about why did we, why did we select this subjects for this webinar? Because before we had different webinars about migration, uh, about components and other technologies, but it, this is a, our first common webinar about databases. And uh, it's really important. We had a lot of requests uh, that just let's uh, discuss what, 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 what did we have, what we have new, which we did not have, for example, 15 years ago, that what do we have right now? Do we have any trendy databases technologies? Like are there development tools? I'm not talking about Delphi or C++ Builder. And we can we, we, we can say yes, we have a lot of uh, new techno new frameworks for Delphi. All of them is up to date, is cutting edge and uh, with the same functionality and performance like other maybe some competitive tools and we can say that Delphi is on, uh, on the edge and we have everything what have everybody else, else and even more. And on this webinar, we, have to, we want to present for you these technologies because uh, 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 which, uh, 
sometimes sometimes uh, some people like delphi developers and other people from delphi community just used to uh, technologies which, which they used 10 years ago and, uh, and just still using the same and we want to this we want to present for you these new ones and it will be not too deeply because each technology can take uh, each technology can be like a, a separate subject for the new webinar if we want to uh, dive it more 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 deeply and we just explain for you and show what do we have right now for Delphi world and uh, if we are talking about today's agenda uh, Wagner will just provide a couple of data access patterns which we have 10 15 years ago and what do we have today i will explain pitfalls of migration legacy versions of databases like interbase and fiber to up to date versions and then together with Wagner we will discuss pros and cons of migration to ORM instead of using regular practices and uh, then we will show you this exact frameworks of technologies like TMS Aurelius, it's ORM systems from TMS software. And this is uh, why we have to show that we all, all, all of course, we have ORM. And we, what else do we have for data access? We're using Delphi, it will be like REST API server and other technologies and frameworks uh, like. Uh, uh, building three what what else we can use for building three tire data access applications and right now we start from uh from the basics what did we have 10 50 years ago and which trendy technologies we have today wagner please thanks sergey uh well uh, i believe uh, many delphi developers know the the way we, we are used to uh, develop client server applications and that database applications. So I think most, if not all of us, uh, have worked with uh, database applications by using tQuery and tDatabase or uh, similar components like tSQL query or tADO query, etc. And uh, that's the, the data pattern we use in Delphi that uh, most developers are using to. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, and the usual way is to drop a, a query component in the form and uh, put some SQL statements in the component and uh, execute the, the SQL statement and bind it to the dataware controls using data source. And uh, that's something that is being used and being uh, used until today. But uh, there are some uh, uh, issues with that approach, like uh, UI and business logic is mixed. <clears throat> so you have a lot of code, you double click your button and you execute SQL statements in your form. And that brings a lot of issues and it's hard to maintain. <clears throat> you have uh, your business logic, mix it with your forms and everything is mixed up. That, because of that, that also makes it hard to build cross database applications and perform testing because everything is, again, it's what, what is, what is said, it's spaghetti code. Everything is mixed in one place and it's hard to isolate and uh, decouple the code. <clears throat> so currently, uh, not only in Delphi, of course, but in many uh, develop, development platforms, uh, first, we have in newer Delphi uh, versions, we have uh, more modern database access components like Faridac, which is a huge improvement over the previous DB components like DB Express. Uh, Faridac is great, fast, and has a lot of uh, features, uh, but it's still people are using Faridac in the old way of dropping in TFD query in the form and mixing business logic. So there are other ways to decouple your application and ORM tools is one of the, those ways. Uh, it allows you to abstract the database access from your code. So you can, uh, and even if you use Faridac directly, what people are using is like a, 
uh, data repositories where you create a layer over your FireDAC components, for example, exactly to isolate the form, the view from your model or controller, which is which is the code that handles database data. So that helps either if you use ORM framework or if you have your own ORM or if you just uh, create a small ORM, so to speak, that abstracts your data layer, that allows you to separate your business code, that allows you to automate tests and uh, so on. So I think uh, for database access, we are talking about uh, REST servers later, right? So, but uh, talking about direct database access, I think that's one uh, change of uh, pattern from before and today. Search. Yeah, like uh, yeah, uh, before, uh, I remember that, yes, I don't uh, even, be, be, because internet was not so popular, this is why we did not have such technologies like REST API. Of course, it, it could be possible to develop them, but they just did not have a sense. But right now, everything's changed. And this is why we are talking uh, about all these multi-tier solutions. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, we can ask the audience, if, uh, if you have, uh, if you still have code that you have, Spaghetti code in your form with SQL statements. Just say I do because we can have an idea if that that's, that pattern is still used today or a well, legacy code that you are still have to maintain. Yeah, yeah. Right now, guys, I will have a three slides about migration and like a pitfalls of migration, legacy uh, databases and database. Uh, uh, management systems, which you, I guess you know, it's most popular. I just selected three ones: it's Firebird, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, and uh, Interbase. And uh, I will just very briefly uh, show you a couple of pitfalls which we got, for example, in the past when we tried to migrate Firebird to uh, old version to up to date. And uh, just uh, like uh, a use case, what which problems you can have possibly when if you will, for example, migrate your 1.x version to 2.x or 3.x, and why the why why you have to why you have to migrate uh, at all? Do you have to you to migrate your software? In this grid, I just provided a couple of uh, improvements for each version. And I can say, for example, for Firebird, if if for, for Firebird, if uh, I have like a use case, we had a database with uh, with maybe 400 tables, 400 uh, storage procedures. Uh, the size was something like 100 gigabytes, and migration took something like one or from one to three weeks. And here you can see what the differences it was it. Because in in uh, uh, SQL syntax and uh, in some the data types, also Firebird introduced a couple of new keywords. And if you had the same words uh, in your storage procedures code, you, you have to change it. Also, in the middle column, you can see improvements. And uh, because there is, a, there is a question why you why I have to migrate if everything is working on my Firebird 1.x version. This slide about Firebird, the next one about SQL Server. Uh, with SQL Server, uh, it's a little bit more hard because it has much more versions and all these versions does not have um, a huge differences and uh, you have to change check new improvements and made a decision. Uh, do you do you need this uh, improvements or you don't? Because I know that um, your software even can work very perfect uh, on uh, 2012 versions uh, with more than the transact SQL, and uh, uh, you even don't need to migrate to the latest version like 2019. But anyway, here you can find the differences because. Uh, SQL Server has uh, a lot of improvements like uh, CL, 
CLR. It's like user defined functions, functions, but they have to be written in .NET programming language like C Sharp. It's not about Delphi, but anyway, a lot of Delphi software, which was written, is reusing even right now. SQL Server. Uh, I think it's maybe even 30%. It's just my feelings. Uh, later, anyway, you can find our presentation and just check this information if it will be interesting for you. And the last, uh, the third slide is about uh, interbase. Uh, interbase ha also have some and not some different uh, improvements because if I uh, I remember and even when we used Delphi 7, we used interbase version 4, 4.5 something like this and of course it's a little bit obsolete and we when we are migrating delphi 7 software we also thinking about migration interbase to up-to-date versions and here is just list of nuances and pitfalls which you can get during this migration i i i i can say that the most uh, most hard migration is just from all old old versions to xe3 and xe7 uh, on the latest version it's much more easy to migrate but again it uh, it can take a lot of time and you have to uh, keep it in mind when you're planning your migration that was about just uh, pitfalls of migration and right now let's start to talk about uh, frameworks and technologies and access patterns to our data and uh, believe me i'm hearing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, thoughts from different people that should i use orm or i shouldn't is it sounds like uh, we don't need it or we, we 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 don't need it or we need it and a lot of different uh, a lot of uh, different uh, opinions about the teammates. Sometimes I'm thinking that this is like a, a religion. Somebody thinks that we have to use it or somebody that we don't need to use it. And right now we just together with Wagner will try to uh, provide pros and cons from our side and from our experience. And uh, you guys uh, will make a decision on your side. Or, you can see uh, here a list of uh, pros, which we uh, and why 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 you have to use this, or you maybe or you maybe you should use your ORM. And uh, Wagner, what uh, can you, from your point of view, say something? Can maybe we add some some uh, examples from your like, from previous previous experience about all these items? Sure. Uh, well, first, you have said very well when you say that sometimes it looks like a religion, the conversation between uh, mm. ORM or no ORM. I have been, uh, I have seen strong defenders, defenders for both sides. And, uh, mm -hmm. and actually, they both are right in their arguments. So it's, it's really a, a matter of your use case, your needs. And as you said in your in a previous slide, a personal taste. Uh, there are pros and cons. Pros for ORM, for example, is that you work with more Pascal class codes, more object codes. So as as it's listed there in the slide, it's easier to test. That's something that it's hard to see for people that are starting with ORM, but uh, it makes your, in the, in the end, it makes your code easier to test. Something that when you work with uh, spaghetti code or SQL statements, you don't even consider it. You, you, if you do testing, you do interface testing, but when you use ORM, you can, in a more easy way, to implement test, <clears throat> integration tests and code, test, testing your code. It's easier to maintain because of that, that's also a point for discussion. It's faster prototyping, at least with uh, TMS or Redis, it's very easy to do. And again, it's easier to separate concerns. That also refers to maintenance and uh, testing. Uh, the code, it's, it's, 
it gets cleaner. It's also a personal taste, of course. Maybe some people, I know people that pref still prefer to use procedural code instead of object-oriented code. So that person will never say that using ORM brings you more cleaner, more clean and beautiful code. Uh, but it's easier to transition to make uh, cross database applications. And uh, as we mentioned, it's better security. For my taste, I prefer the clean code, the fact that I work with objects and it's faster to develop for, for me, for example, that I'm using to TMS or Redis. And it's also that it's all or nothing is an important thing. You don't have to migrate your whole application to ORM, or if you adopt it, you don't have to use it everywhere. It's like a tool. You use it when you think it. you should use it, and you go back to SQL statements when you need to go back to SQL statements. Yeah, because uh, uh, this maybe will be about on our next slide, that why people, from my experience, are scary to use ORM? Because uh, they something like they just lose control, low level control uh, from uh, the how this all these queries will be performed. Because we have to uh, we have to uh, divide all queries like uh, on, on on little bricks and do not perform some very complicated uh, constructions using uh, ORM. It's again my opinion, but maybe maybe I'm wrong. Uh, because, uh, for example, I have so, such experience with SQL Server. When I could analyze my queries only using uh, uh, database uh, analytic tools, when I just dump with SQL queries, and then try to uh, and try to perform some some experiments with uh, ORM ORM operators, like I change in this one, and then I'm dumping my query and checking what the result. This is why one may be my one of the first, one of the most uh, uh, famous, sounds like counter arguments why you don't need to use ORM. The first, uh, the second one, uh, what I'm hearing, something like uh, when I change in something in database structure, some ORM is very sensitive to these changes. If I if I change some change something in database structure and did not change in my inside my client, it can it can uh, generate an errors because some ORMs cannot on the flight uh, uh, change and work with changed database structure because, for example, uh, like even even entity, you uh, in other you know this technology, maybe guys. Uh, it it have a mapping of database uh, compile like compile it source like compile it and if something was changed on database this schema is not compatible with the database and nothing work this again the like, counter argument from some people why you don't need to use uh, what about this situation uh, Wagner uh, with Aurelius if I change something on the database size for example just added some field to some table. Uh, should I recompile all clients, or it just will uh, this field will be ignored for if it was not you not unique, not mandatory field in the database? In that specific case, uh, already we just ignore it. If you have extra fields and extra data tables in the database, and they are not. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have that those in entity classes already you work just fine. Uh, uh, it's interesting that you that you made that point because I'm not aware of that limitation in other ORMs. But as you are saying, probably there is. That's indeed a point against ORM uh, if that happens. It's not the case yeah. with yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why. I say, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's why I say it's uh, at least when using Aurelius, it's it's not all or nothing at all because. Uh, you can have uh, an application with hundreds of tables and a lot of code, and you, and you simply create a new form, for example, inside your application and say, okay, I'm using Aurelius in this new form that I'm creating, and that's okay. Regardless of, you don't have to map all your tables or your classes and, and things like that. And, uh, it, it, and actually, that's one advantage of using ORM, 
it's more, more or less like you said because when you don't use ORM and change your database you might end up for example with errors like uh, fields blah not does not exist in database for example you only get those errors mm -hmm. in runtime when you use SQL statements because you change your database and you deploy your application the way it is I mean, but you rename it a field or you don't have a table in your code and we with ORM since you deal with objects of course you you will not get all errors but you get more errors at compile time because you are dealing with the object so it it has that small advantage as well yeah we will talk a, a little bit more about Aurelis on the next slide guys it's just like yeah. but of course the announced and yeah, yeah continue ORM is not a silver bullet I don't use it in all of my applications of course if you really really need super performance and you really need to save and retrieve millions of of records in uh, uh, in a very short time and uh, and you have object overhead so sometimes of course it's better to use direct SQL statements it all depends on your application but it's like that that's uh, talking about SQL performance for example in the old days of gaming and you have those Atari games people had to develop the game in 4k bytes because that's all the memory you had in these days you don't have to worry about memory mostly in most applications so uh performance is still important for some applications but it's become it's becoming less important because hardware is evolving so even if you have an overhead uh in most applications that doesn't matter anymore yeah but if we for example uh, we need just performance we can put all these queries to storage procedures they also will be uh, performed very fast but inside delphi we will have very clean code if we will use ORM without all these very long sql, SQL queries but also why uh, sometimes i people like to use uh, also sql because they just can put sql queries not inside compiled code put them into some settings files some encrypted files and uh, in this case they just will be able to replace them without a recompilation of the application for example for some updates that's also a, a good solution if you for example need if you need such updating process of sql queries and some features and of course in this case orm won't work correct yeah <coughs> okay sorry okay let's move on and now let's talk uh, about exactly about uh, TMS Aurelis uh, because for me just uh, again it's like independent uh, opinion uh, for me it's like one of the most uh, I don't know uh, uh, tools which uh, I, I I know I wish I'm here from other people of course we are no, not not only like one daily and uh, but on this webinar we want to show you uh, guys, how to use this exactly TMS Aurelius because Wagner is expert of this system and this is please uh, explain and why why we have to use TMS Aurelius. Well, uh, about specific features of the framework itself, uh, one thing I like most about TMS Aurelius is uh, the flexibility. Is the very first statement there because, as you said, you don't have as it it works if you if you don't map something it uh, works on virtually most database you have so it if you have composite keys if you have a strange structure existing databases it it has flexibility enough to handle existing most existing databases that you have there and the code is clean because you don't have to use specific data types like TRL is integer or TRL is a string or something like that. Your classes will be just pure classes. So you can even code your business logic without a Redis, just Delphi, and then later you map and persist your classes in the database in an easy way. And uh, it also has uh, full query syntax and uh, that it just works is something that we are very proud of too because the problem is in the details when you start using it a framework uh, in on the paper it it's 
wonderful, but when you start using it, either it lacks some specific feature, you get stuck at some point, or you have a bug here and strange behavior that. And uh, I can say that Aurelius has most features that it's needed for most applications, and it's very well tested with all database it's supported. Practically all features are tested and there are virtually no known bugs, bugs for TMS already so far. We, if when we receive a report right away. So that's one also one strong point about it. And, uh, yes, we have also this slide. It's like I, I, I ask it Wagner a lot of time just you know, because I we want to be objective. I ask it him, please provide. You, know, you have to know. You have to know some cons of the Aurelius. But uh, even I, 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 I read a lot of documentation. I all, all my team also is tried and using TMS Aurelius, and believe me. I didn't find any cons like cons which is not belongs to any RM like uh, things which which we already discussed. It's like I don't I, I don't want to use ORM because of uh, this. But it's not about TMS Aurelius, and we even did not find any cons. It's and uh, it's uh, I, I think it's it should be objective opinion and objective point of view from me and from my team. Well, and, uh, there is a complaint yeah. that people have about Aurelius, which is uh, it doesn't work on old old Delphi versions. Uh, so, mm -hmm. well, it's not a con for many people that sometimes you have a, a, a software in Delphi seven or Delphi two thousand ten, and then unfortunately you cannot use TMS Aurelius in that regard. Yeah, but uh, I think. Uh, from which, uh, what's the minimal version for TMS release for Delphi? XE2. XE2, mm, okay. But uh, I, I think that people which are already using, still using maybe Delphi 5, Delphi 7, right now they have a lot of thinking about migration. And I think yeah. it will be not only about just uh, licenses for new versions because of new Windows interface and a lot of improvements and that's why I think uh, after the migration uh, it will be available and it will be uh, interesting and uh, to try this uh, or uh, for the software. Uh, now, uh, I also I ask it to I ask it Wagner provides a couple of uh, uh, some compare provide some comparison of uh, ORM and uh, entity framework and uh, I, I'm I'm not blind and. You, I know that everybody is comparing Delphi and tech technologies from Windows we are fighting. And here are just a just couple of uh, arguments from uh, Wagner. And I, I, I can add for myself that Aurelius and uh, some other Delphi ORMs have the same functionality and even better. Wagner, do you have what to add? Yeah, um, Entity Framework is not something I'm, I'm very fluent with. I played with it a little bit, but uh, I don't have experience on using it in production of big applications. But if if you go to websites that list major Entity Frame features, uh, you have those items, for example, that you can use uh, simple classes that it changes tracking of objects. You have eager lazy loading feature to improve performance when you need it. You have queries. You have strong object-oriented programming support, inheritance, associations. You can use code first or DB first. And uh, all of those features are also in TMS Aurelius. So it's, uh, it's like uh, you can compare TMS Aurelius with a major ORM framework in a major platform like .NET, which is Entity Framework. And uh, that's uh, in the right of the slide. There is a small comment there that got my attention, which is uh, I saw an announcement for Entity Framework 7 that they are adding unique constraints and uh, that you could make a map, a model, an object, and uh, map it to 
a foreign key that doesn't map to the primary key of the reference table, but a unique key. Anyway, it's a very specific feature that has been in already since version one. And uh, it's not a big deal about uh, entity frameworks, just to point out that when you start working with, you have a lot of small, tiny features here and there that you need. And that's one, for example, that entity framework was missing and not Aurelius. So it's there. And you can guess, you can see the TMS and TMS software and the product chat company with Microsoft, with this giant. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, can we can can we move on, Wagner, or yes. you you want to add something else? No. Oh, okay. okay. Before we guys discussed about data access patterns using uh, ORM, and uh, the differences with what do we what do we ha what do we have in the past and today, and I think this one another one of the major uh, branches of data access patterns is this REST API. And uh, here is, I just comparing REST API uh, with a uh, classic DB access patterns. I think it's it including, it may including ORM or direct uh, using direct uh, database access using uh, our popular components like ADO or TQuery and other uh, uh, components based on this TQuery for any databases. and. Uh, if to be honest, I were I like I like REST API architecture, uh, and in our company we are using a lot of for different uh, multi-tier solutions, uh, even for day desktop software. If even if we are storing database and database we have database storage inside local network, inside Ethernet, we also using it for uh, mobile solutions for web application. We even have web applications like websites, like web portals, which are using uh, a REST API, uh, like data access, like data storage and data access from to another server or to another database, which is hosted on different machines or even different clouds. And I like this uh, solution and this pattern because it's very flexible and flexible for adding new uh, clients and the new systems, subsystems, especially if you want to build any platform solution or uh, SaaS solution. And what's the pros of REST API? The first one is version. You can add different uh, REST API versions for your solutions. Uh, and uh, different clients will have support for different uh, for different uh, versions and of course somebody can tell that okay i can write new uh, clients using new sql queries but all the time you have to think about backward compatibility when you're developing your database tables and so here you are controlling this on the top level you're controlling this data data access level just providing guides and manuals how people have have to use your rest api and data and data and you even can hide your data how you how you realize that the data storage is it sql server or this oracle sybase or anything else or even mongodb you just have a facade for use for people like rest api and uh, it's very, very, uh, very good solution if you if you will provide, for example, some data access for third-party systems or vendors or your subcontractors. You do you are not providing direct access to database. You just can provide what you want. You can uh, you can develop uh, some permissions. Uh, features even you even can control speed and how how fast and how many requests to your data this uh, third parties can perform and uh, again or again i already mentioned the permissions but and roles but for example if you are using uh, sql server of course you can set up roles permissions provide some user login and password for, for your third party for some subcontractor but believe me, for huge uh, databases with uh, hundreds of tables and storage procedures, it's not 
easy to set up all these permissions and keep them in head or on some papers or even if something happens, for example, with your database. And uh, REST API provides for us data lawyer abstractions. And what I already mentioned, that you have the same data, data uh, specification for any clients. It can be even Delphi application, C++ build application, even uh, uh, some mobile application which was built uh, using Android Studio or Xcode for iOS, even Objective-C. And you are not uh, thinking about how your, uh, your clients uh, I, when I'm talking about client, I'm talking about client application, client software. Mm -hmm. How this client applications will implement access to your data? Because uh, REST API using XML or JSON is unifying the data access, and this is why I, I like it. And now here I just um, I just want to show and just provide a couple of architectures which you can use for building your REST, REST API server. Of course, it's, it's, here is not, not all solutions which you can find in internet because we have solutions for Java, we have for Python, for other programming languages right now, we have so huge so, but here is again, most popular from my point of view. And especially if we're talking about data related solutions and Delphi ecosystem. A Red Studio ecosystem. The first one it's a Red Server. Red Server it's uh, uh, also it's like a solution and product from Embarcadero. It's like it can be like a part of uh, Red Studio if you have a specific license. Uh, I, I, if I remember, it's for architecture license. A Red Server it's uh, ready to use REST API server which you can just install to your Windows or Linux machine. Uh, it has its, its, its server's database and you will have REST API server from the scratch. It is REST API server like a wrapper for your database. It also have different support for different databases, uh, interbase, SQL server and so on. And it really will save you time. Uh, on the board, it already have roles and permissions management different login systems. A little bit uh, later I will provide some uh, information about Red Server. The second solution, uh, you can uh, you can take uh, uh, ready to use and freeware free uh, solutions. It's one of the, the solutions in Dream Factory. We also used it a lot of time and right now we are using it. It's free for a free database systems for SQL server, server it, it does not free, but like for databases like uh, MySQL, uh, MongoDB, it, it's, it's free. And again, this is ready to use REST API server, which you have to install on your virtual machine and connect to your database. It has its own console. It uh, has uh, different logs and uh, it's also beautiful, but it's uh, based on PHP. It's only for LAMP, LAMP solutions from if we are talking about customization. Of course, you can build your REST API server using TMS X data solution from TMS software. It's again, you can build your application, deploy it to, 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 to virtual machine, it will be connected to database and it will be like a facade and database wrapper, like as REST API server for your clients and you, you for your software. You can uh, you can host it on uh, cloud uh, cloud or, or on on-premises server. Later, I will ask Br uh, Wagner about uh, some details. And the fourth solution uh, again, this is last year. It's very popular like you can build your REST API server using different uh, serverless or solutions from uh, different cloud platforms. Here is, I just show you Microsoft Azure. Uh, I, if to be honest, I don't know, do we have the same one for Amazon Web Services? But for Azure, you can just write some code and develop your REST API server uh, using Azure console without uh, any compilation, writing code inside, uh, 
Visual Studio and so on. And it's very for Amazon. You have was... Amazon Lambda. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, so thank you. Yes, in this case, we also have something uh, using Amazon. Okay, let's move on. And here, uh, a couple of slides will be about Red Server, and uh, we also using it. And uh, as I already said, uh, it is part of uh, Red Studio, and it's integrated to some features. And for Delphi solutions, it's it's it's, it's good. It's good, and you, I I I, I think that uh, you have also guys just check out. Uh, check it more deeply its features and make a decision do you need it or you don't need it it's solution from the box it implements a lot of routines if you want to, st to start development your uh, rest API server you have to think about uh, different things like users management permissions a login uh, uh, rules how to perform uh, and how to build your uh, packets uh, for, for your data it have already have different, uh, I know two different admin consoles, uh, because if you want to manage your REST API server, you have to write it, it's, uh, but it's all about the time. And uh, interesting is that you can uh, develop extensions for your REST server, you can, for REST server, you can extend its functionality, just writing Delphi code, using, um, using Delphi code, you can just create some kind of Delphi project, it's called uh, Red Server Extension. We are using Delphi, you can write and add any customization which you need uh, for uh, de for developing any um, extension for your Red Server. Because uh, uh, from the box, Red Server is just, uh, again, wrapper from your database for insert, update, delete, select uh, operators and uh, functions. And if we are talking about uh, any cons, uh, uh, for me, for me, it's one of the most uh, not acceptable things in some, for some project and solutions that we cannot uh, deploy it to shared hosting. Uh, share, when I'm talking about shared hosting, I'm talking about uh, any web applications from Azure, from uh, Amazon, it's like, uh, or maybe even like GoDaddy website. You cannot just uh, compile something and upload it. You will need a virtual machine with access, uh, usually with access to operation system features. Uh, it's like a uh, I, I, uh, I, 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 I module uh, and uh, you cannot. And you have to think in this case about this virtual machine. It's much more expensive. You have to think about security, updates and so on. Uh, and of course, if you are developing and you, if you are using your ready solution, you have to think about backward compatibility at what we will have in the next versions of Red Server, if you will update Delphi and so on and so on. Well, sometimes if you are developing your own solution, uh, you, you, you won't have these problems, but you will have, you will need more time for development, of course. and. Uh, you will have more bugs, which you also have to fix and uh, control. And again, if you if you want to change core functionality, it can be a challenge, like like for any other ready software and solution. Uh, and as we already mentioned, we can we can develop our REST API server using XData solution from uh, TMS. And right now I, I want to ask Wagner, uh, show us and explain how we can use this solution to save our time for development. For development. Okay, Serge. Uh, I think the, to be very short, the main features of, uh, main pros of TMS XData are the two points that I mentioned in this slide. The first one, it's it's very easy to learn and use because of its architecture. Uh, we usually receive, receive feedback from the users that they are enjoying, that's the word, enjoying using XData because you really feel home and you feel that the code is smooth and uh, in a short, it's, it's, it's easy and uh, fun to use it. And uh, the second point is that 
it's just like our values it's it just works it uh i have for example several servers in next data and i know of customers of also that uh they are running the server for not for now months and since x data it's old some some servers for years and uh it doesn't have memory leaks it doesn't uh, take a lot of memory it doesn't crash so it simply keeps working and working and it also uses low memory so in the end you have uh you can have a cheaper architecture in the cloud to run it it simply require, it requires less hardware less run uh, and there are other features that uh, we don't, don't have time to go here in details but uh, uh, the fact that you use reuse code for both server and client and uh, you have swagger ui that it's it's it works out of the box because uh, you don't have to add a lot of documentation because it's mm -hmm. the metadata it integrates with Aurelius. That's one point. Also, people think that you have to use TMS Aurelius to use XData, and that's not true. It's optional. And finally, it comes with uh, full source code. So everything is of the framework uh, is with source code provided, and it's royalty free di distribution, meaning that you can compile your server and distribute it as many as you as you want for as many customers or many cloud computers computers you want without uh, needing to have a license for each of those servers. I think that to be concise, that's it, Serge. Yeah, and uh, what we already mentioned, uh, building REST API server using TMSX data is like a subject of a separate webinar because, for example, even for me, it's very interesting. What I will have uh, in the end, well, what kind of Delphi play project I have to create? What when I mentioned what I will have on the end, it will be executed. What will be some extension? It will be some library. How I can deploy it? For me, it's very interesting. But unfortunately, we don't have enough time today and right now. And but uh, you guys can or uh, you can check TMS documentation. It's very detailed, and maybe also in the later tomorrow this week we will create a questionnaire to, and send to uh, each registered webinar person and maybe you will suggest for us uh, any ideas for our future webinars if you it will be interesting about Aurelis, about x data and we will make a decision what to do and which webinars prepare in the future and uh, what about cons of x data again i wagner give me cons Wagner gave me cons because I, I'd like to again be uh, objective and what what can you say Wagner about this uh, ideal solution? Yeah, it uh, there is the cons of the the solution itself, which is you have to learn rest. Uh, your application will be a very different one because if you have an application accessing database with. Uh, query component and you have to move to XData or Red Server or whatever REST API you are using, you, it's a whole new paradigm for you, for developers that are not used to it. You have to re rewrite your client applications at some level. So that's uh, one uh, problem. Uh, you wrote a con for Red Server that uh, XData has the same problem. It's the last one, I don't remember. Can you move back some slides? Yeah. Please. This one? Yeah, yeah, you don't have you, the deployment is similar, is the same. You have that mm -hmm. that issue as well. And uh, yeah, but the main problem is is to uh, that's the, the thing I see with people. They they have problems with understanding the architecture itself. Not how to how to how to develop, but how to work the architecture it's, itself, and how they should rewrite their client applications to work with the new. Uh, mm -hmm. because, yeah, because when I'm hearing some um, uh, from so, so from people, uh, because when people thinking about REST API server, they are thinking in terms of a classic web application, for example, which was built using PHP and uh, Apache. 
and they think that uh, okay, REST server is just PHP application or Python application or uh, uh, SP.NET application, which I just put to hosting. It is just regular web application. In terms of REST server and XData, it's a little bit different. It's uh, it's like uh, it's next level. It's not so, such low level of solution. Am I correct, Wagner? Yes. I'm, yeah. Yeah, and uh, this is what maybe in the future we will have, uh, because what I'm thinking is that people don't don't want to think about all this uh, machines management. They and about they are even expensive. They just want to buy some slot on some cloud platform, put couple of uh, put couple of files to this slot, and don't think about its uh, uh, availability lower and so on they don't want to manage this virtual machine and this is maybe one of the challenges for us for the future how to how to create such service using delphi uh, that's against my opinion okay i think that we we, we can move on because we oh, we already spent or uh, an hour it's like a regulament and also, guys, I asked it from Wagner some example of solutions using TMX data, and he provided for me some solution, some software and product which was built and right now working, working many years. And you can see some, maybe Wagner, you, 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 you have something quite to add about this application, how it works. Yeah, you asked me about uh, Rio, Rio use. And since you don't have time to show things here, uh, it's worth a mention about this tool here. It's a tool for health system in Brazil, validadortis.com.br. Uh, you can access the website, it's in Portuguese, but uh, maybe you can have an idea. And it uses XData as a backend, so it's a public X data, so it's not an internal network, and it handles thousands of users in the whole Brazil. There's a lot of transactions per day, especially log transactions that, uh, it, so it's, a, it's a many requests per second, and it, it's working fine. And just out of curiosity, uh, they are now building a web interface. The application is desktop and it's now in a web interface using TMS Web Core connecting to it. So it's a great use case. It's working, running, and uh, it's a big setup. Yeah, very impressive. Uh, here is we just um, provided uh, other other patterns and solutions, and even products come some of the commercial products. How you can access this data using Delphi? Or we are not one. One, we, are, we are not providing information one sidedly. This is, you can guys find it at any time, even make a screenshot, and you can check all the solutions. Uh, I don't think that we are listed all solutions available for Delphi, but I think it's maybe one of the most popular, which people are using, maybe because maybe some of them not uh, too up to date, but uh, anyway. Uh, And uh, one of the solutions, it was again the third product from TMS, which is very interesting for me. It's like Remote DB, TMS Remote DB. And uh, very briefly, Wagner, maybe you can provide a couple of words about it. Okay. Uh, TMS Remote DB, it's another way of moving your application to the cloud. People get confused about this, its difference between with uh, related to X data. But besides moving the application to the cloud, it's very different solutions. Uh, TMS, TMS, TMS Remote DB, it's, uh, as it's written there, it's a super rapid way to move your application to the cloud. Different from a REST API move, REST API move, it requires minimum rewrite of your existing application. You still be using your query components, you replace with the Remote DB, but the, the pattern will be the same. And the idea is that you keep your application running as if it was client server, but they are access, accessing the database in the cloud and not directly the database in the cloud, but through the remote DB uh, server. So it's, it's, it's 
moving your database to the cloud. Yeah, maybe I'll, I will switch the screen. It will be, it will have uh, okay. yeah, this, yeah. this image. Yeah. That's the idea there. In the cloud, you have the cloud drawing there. In the cloud, you have your database server, which is the what you want to reach. And in front of it, you have the remote DB server. And from the client application, inside your client application, you have your T remote DB database and TX data set that you are going to use to connect to this to the database in the cloud through HTTP, not through TCP, for example. So it's that's the, the mechanism. And you have the option, of course, to still connect directly to your database. Uh, using the generic database. So you have your application moving to the cloud, connecting to a cloud database, or connecting to your local database in the same application. There are the limitations that it described there. Uh, it's not a REST server, so you don't have server-side logic there. You just execute SQL statements. That's a lower security level because any SQL statement can be executed, of course, with proper credentials. And since it's it's a proprietary a specific protocol that you can only use Delphi clients. You cannot use clients for other platforms or from the web, et cetera. So it's a very specific solution. Yeah, and uh, here just uh, some use case of migration uh, to remote DB from Wagner. Yeah. Also maybe a couple of that, words. That was it. actually, one of the orange of TMS Remote DB, uh, we had this customer who had a traditional VCL client server ERP, it, which it was it is huge. It's still being developed. So hundreds of forms, hundreds of uh, tables, lots of data set components in the, that traditional way you know. And they had more and more pressure to move the application to the cloud to allow the customers to use their software from anywhere, from home, from uh, a notebook, using the cell phone network. And uh, in nearly two weeks after RemoteDB was available and, and uh, ready for production, they were able to migrate their whole ERP to the cloud. Of course, two weeks of about two or three weeks of coding. I mean, the, of course, there were testing and the they had to do a lot of tweaks here and there, which is normal to make it ready for, for production. But it was really, really fast. For the core of the coding was done in two weeks. And then, then only testing was remaining. And then they were able to move their application to the cloud. Now they are using next data, slowly moving some uh, a lot of code to the cloud using the REST AP approach. But since then, their application were accessible from anywhere uh, without needing to install clients or open ports or having poor performance and those connection losses. Yeah, very cool. Okay, guys, we are almost done. And now we will share the coupons which we mentioned in the beginning of the webinar. Here, as you can see, the value of promo code for TMS uh, products. You can copy it, send it to anybody. You can make a screenshot, share it with your friends, colleagues, and so on. This coupon is valid uh, to October 9th, 19th. It's not uh, like uh, uh, all the time or all life. It has a, it's a temporary promo code, but anyway, it, it's not, and uh, you know that the TMS products is very cool, and they even don't need an advertisement. And anyway, it's a good. I think it's a good, uh, good, uh, uh, good place where you can take uh, this discount if you if you are planning, or maybe some of you clients plan to buy the TMS products. Here is the promo code for uh, econ conference tickets. It's uh, this coupon. I, I don't have any terms. So you can buy the coupon even, I guess, October 27th. And also, we will we can meet 
on uh, Econ. You can, I can, you can meet with Bruno, ask uh, any personal questions. Also, you can meet with me. It, it, I will be, I will be very glad to meet with somebody from our attendees of my our webinars. Now, guys, if you care, if you have any questions, you can ask them to Bruna, to Wagner, to me. Also, of course, you can reach us in any social networks using email, Twitter. Here is you can find some in contacts. My Twitter account and email, Brunas and Wagner's. Wagner is not using Twitter, but you can reach him via the email. You can also check his personal website. And of course, you can find a lot of information on softacom.com and tmssoftware.com. Guys, we are writing questions if you have. If you want, uh, we can scroll back to the promo code values. If not, again, it's it's too late, for example, for us. You can reach us and ask any questions. Guys, Bruno, Wagner, do you have what to add? Maybe you have to provide some additional information for the participants. I'd just like to thank you, Serge, for the invitation for the webinar. And uh, thank you for all the attendance to, that were here. And uh, we'll be in contact. Uh, we at TMS Software are available for any questions you might have. As Serge said, you can reach us by, via email. There are the channels. Maybe Bruno can talk more about it. And uh, thank you very much. You have some more. Thank you. thank you, Wagner. Thanks a lot. Yes, Serge, you hear me? Yeah, very good. So thank you very much in the first place for organizing this uh, webinar. It's uh, very much appreciated. I think it's also very interesting to do things like this. And uh, I also think it's uh, very good to um, uh, let the suggestions come in for possible future topics that we cover in a webinar like this. I wanted to add uh, one more thing, which is uh, we have talked about Aurelius, we have talked about Xdata Remote DB. Well, if you want to dive uh, one full day into this uh, content, we organize actually in the near future, uh, actually on November 14 and uh, November 18, we offer a full training day uh, on these topics, on Aurelius, on RemoteDB and on uh, Xdata. And the November 14 event is happening in uh, Dusseldorf. And you can find the information, maybe if I have a moment, I can paste the link into the chat window and hope it will be available or visible to uh, everyone. Let me do that. Here it is. That's the November 14 event. And then there is also on November 18, on Monday, we have uh, the same content, the same um, kind of training day in our own office in uh, Belgium. So it's not only an opportunity to dive a whole day into this uh, content together with the expert uh, Wagner, but you also have an opportunity to visit our office and meet with all the other uh, members of the team and possibly also discuss about other technical topics, other uh, software that we provide. So um check these pages you can uh, register for the november 14 day in dusseldorf or you can um, register for monday in belgium in our office and just for uh, the for people for people's understanding is it free Bruno? everybody can just uh, uh, this is not uh, a free event actually uh well um we organize a full day of uh, in-depth uh, content and this is offered together with uh, coffee warm meal uh, so it's not only um, the content but it's also the whole surroundings and food that we provide so uh, we make something more out of it and uh, that's why we need to charge a price for it which will uh, which is uh, 250 euros but I see. But anyway, it will be like a like a full uh, 
study, I don't know, full classes where people just will increase their level and uh, get new uh, information and uh, technologies, even on the practice from experts directly, like uh, <coughs> very close to them, not like using any virtual, I guess any virtual uh, messengers or, or any other, I don't know, communication ways. It just will be person and person, correct? Mm. This, uh, this is correct. And um, this is also the intention that you can bring your laptop with your software installed and you get uh, hands-on uh, help, insight, discussion, um, and, uh, and, and tips and tricks to get the most all out of your uh, software from uh, Wagner directly himself. Very cool. Okay, guys. Thank you, Bruno, for coming. Thank you, You're welcome. for coming. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I, I want to say it to everybody for coming. Uh, as I already mentioned, um, we will create a quiz uh, or questionnaire where you guys will provide some ideas, provide from some feedback about our webinars, and we will just uh, uh, put our, us to the correct uh, direction and see you on our next webinars and see you somewhere online. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.